So the Raiders saw all the things that the entire AFC West were doing with the Chargers getting Khalil Mack, JC Jackson, Sebastian Joseph Day, the Broncos trading for Russell Wilson, the Chiefs just being the Chiefs. And not only did they go out and sign Chandler Jones to a big deal for one of the best 10 pass rushers in the NFL, even though he is 32, he's still productive and extremely talented. They go out and trade for maybe the best receiver in the league in Devontae Adams. He's very, very good. And he gets to team up with his college quarterback, Derek Carr. Apparently has even bought a house next to Derek Carr in Las Vegas. So he was always going to this Raiders team. Seems like he wanted to be a Raider. Grew up a Raiders fan, it sounds like, in California. Now they play in Las Vegas. No state income tax. So half his games per year. Not going to have to pay that to the state. That's another factor. Very cool for Devontae Adams. And very cool for the Raiders who are trying to be competitive in this very difficult AFC West. So there is work to be done here. There is. And some of this team is not exactly right. You guys know with the offseason, uh, things get crazy. I did bring in Darius Phillips, Bilal Nichols. But as you see this, the Raiders could have made some, ultra, or some other moves. You know, signed some guys, released some guys, maybe traded for somebody or traded somebody away. These things are possible, but this is what I have now as I record this. That's all I can go off of. And we'll go ahead and try to rebuild this Raiders team and really be competitive in a very, very tough AFC West. That includes, you know, some of the top quarterbacks in the league, really. And Derek Carr, yeah, a little bit behind those guys, but that doesn't mean we can't build this team into a juggernaut. That's what we're going to try to do. I also am going to have to trade Yannick Ngakwe. Carl Nassib got cut in real life. Again, I wish I could do all this stuff beforehand and get the draft order correct, but it's just not possible to do that. Is Corey Littleton still under contract? He is, but also I run the team now, so he's not. I'm cutting him. So I believe it was just Yannick Ngakwe straight up for Rocky Scene. So we're going to go ahead and make that trade happen. And then it's Denzel Perryman for a seventh round pick from the Panthers. That's not something I want to do, but it's also not my choice. And the Panthers actually cannot afford this. Now I got to go to their team and see what's going on and make this work. Me from the future, just recorded it. You'll see how it goes. But I want to tell you, follow me on Twitch and YouTube, my second channel. Bengal plays on YouTube, MLB The Show's coming out. I'm going to be playing a lot of MLB The Show, including franchise, I think this year on YouTube. On Twitch, I'm going to be streaming it all the time. Twitch.tv slash Bengal. If I go into one more Twitch chat and someone goes, wait, are you Bengal from YouTube? I watch you all the time. Uh, yeah, part of me is like, oh, I'm so grateful. Uh, whatever. Uh, the second part of me is like, you're on Twitch. I shout out my Twitch. You don't follow me? Follow me on Twitch. Come to the streams, please. Link in the description, twitch.tv slash Bengal. You got to remember six letters. All right, Perriman is gone. We got a seventh round pick. The Raiders have no picks. <laughs> they just don't. We'll go ahead and go to the third round here and see who's available. Looking to improve the offensive line. And at the defense still. Uh, we need safety. If Lewis Seen's available in the third round somehow, I'll take him. This offensive line is not exactly to my liking. Like if we have to go with... Leatherwood's going to start. Alex Leatherwood's going to start. John Simpson eventually probably will need a right tackle so badly, like Andre James at center. This linebacking core is not great. I might try and trade Cleveland Furl. I can't imagine his trade value significant. Nate Hobbs doesn't have star dev still. I know he got into some not so great off the field stuff, but he played well. I do think Divine Diablo is going to be pretty good going forward at weak side linebacker that being said we do need a, a true mic right now brian asamoah is here you know malcolm rodriguez kind of feels like a raider if we can take him in the fourth i'd be pretty pleased with that actually let's go with asamoah first good athlete out of oklahoma welcome to the raiders and yeah, I think I might follow it up with Malcolm Rodriguez. I think that's going to be 
a decent play for us. He might not be available. There goes Kellen Deesh. Pretty great athlete. But will he be available? Darian Beavers wouldn't be bad either. So Damone Clark's here. He's another good player. Probably should be rated a little bit better in this class. Same thing with uh, Terrell Bernard too. Ultimately, good players are going to drop. It's just such a talented draft class in terms of depth that not everyone can get drafted. Even though there are the most picks in this draft with compensatory picks since 2003, not everyone can get drafted. I'm going to take Damone Clark here. Another pretty good athlete. See if we can develop him. It's, it's not anything game changing here with this draft, but with a third and a fourth round pick, it's going to be difficult to land real top tier talent. We have back to back picks here in the fifth round. I don't even know what I want. Let's go with Thayer Munford from Ohio State. He's all right. Experienced that tackle as well. I don't know if he's going to start. Not now, anyway. Let's go with Thomas Booker out of Stanford. Could be decent. I like Thomas Booker. He had a good combine, too. He's over 300 pounds. Doesn't even look close to it. Dude is shredded. Not horrible. Not horrible. You know, Asimo is near 70. Demon Clark is pretty close. Thayer Munford is at least comparable to some of the other offensive linemen that we have, which isn't great, by the way. Uh, even though this Raiders team did improve in terms of star power, it still has a number of pretty clear holes. They're going to need guys to develop. They're going to need stars to come out of nowhere. I mean, is Richie Incognito even still on the team? He's not under contract, but he is here because I kept him, I guess. But uh, yeah, we'll see how 2022 goes. Again, there are some significant flaws with this roster that I really don't know how competitive it's going to be in this AFC West. The offensive line is not great. Alex Leatherwood is going to start at right tackle, which I, th I still think is kind of more of his natural position. I know he doesn't have the longest arms. He's got to make it work because he looks absolutely horrible at guard, which, I mean, should be a little bit easier to play than tackle, but it, it was... It was not good. Do I start Mel uh, Markel Lee? 26. Uh, all right. I probably should try and start Damone Clark. Dude, Clark and Markel Lee at outside linebacker playing up to the same overall. I'm going to start Damone Clark. And we'll at least be able to develop him a little bit better. Crosby Jones, Nate Hobbs in the slot. The defensive line obviously looks incredibly good. Max Crosby is amazing. Was at the top of the league or near it in pressures last year. Despite the sack number not being great, he was dominant. Divine Diablo, Brian Asamoa, sub linebacker, that's fine. Tyree Gillespie will play a little bit. We'll have Hunter Renfro, of course, in the slot. Yeah, it could be a pretty good team. It's going to be tough. Why would Charles Woodson not have a positional expertise of safety? Was Charles Woodson not also an all pro first team safety at the end of his career? I want to say his like, final year. Or maybe the year before he retired. I want to say he was all pro first team safety. All pro second team his final year in 2015 at strong safety. Surely he would know something about playing safety as well. Apparently not. Do I want to keep it like that? I mean, we're going to need linebacker. I honestly think it's fine. I'll leave it as is. Maybe, maybe getting somebody on a middle linebacker wouldn't be the worst thing. So I think we kind of have our quarterback. Uh, unfortunately and I, I say that not as a dig at Derek Carr I say it more because I know he's not really going to ever develop in the game so that is uh, obviously extremely concerning to me but we'll get Salvador Ortega here triangle is to hire interesting you think it'd be X or yeah, X on PlayStation. Four and three at the midseason mark. I think the AFC West could in theory look something like this. All teams around 500. The Broncos doing a little bit worse, but that's reasonable, right? It's not insane. Ooh, Rock Yassine with the opportunity to go up. Is he already at star dev? I think he is. He's not going to get up to superstar. I mean, surely not. We did win 28-14 against the Colts. Rock Yassine's former team but no, he had a quiet game out there, and he's not going to go up to superstar dev, unfortunately. Now, what else is there? Players ready to negotiate.
could be significant. Max Crosby, although I got to change this because he signed an extension in real life. So Max Crosby now has a pretty significant contract. It probably isn't set up exactly like that in real life, but those are the details. $13 million signing bonus, four years, 94 mil. It's 23 and a half per year. Cap hit is in the 20s for some of those seasons. It only gets as high as 24 though. And in this, I think it gets significantly more expensive than 24. Yeah, maybe I'll tone down the salary a little bit just to match the in real life cap hit because it doesn't get more expensive than 24, 5, 2 in real life. But in the game, it uh, is significantly more expensive. Maybe I'll try out like 90, 94.2 and see what that looks like still a little bit too expensive all right that actually looks really close to what it is in real life so i'm fine with that i'm gonna leave it as is it gets a little bit more expensive than it does in real life just a little bit i'm cool with it a lot of free agents though richie incognito i'm fine to ignore is Derek carr still on this contract is that what this rebuild is just contract checker okay no he is still on the same contract also Derek carr and Derek carrier it's spelled the same way, both on the Raiders, except Derek Carrier has IER at the end. There's some joke to be made there. I'm not quick enough to come up with it clearly. We're gonna extend Derek Carr. It's pretty expensive, but he will be back to play with his buddy, Devontae Adams. Imagine if he's like, no, nah, I'm walking. <laughs> I'm not gonna be here anymore. Also brought back Josh Jacobs. Looking pretty good so far. Gotta bring back Hunter Renfro. We seem to have a lot of money. Eight mil per year? This feels like too much. Got it down a little bit. Probably don't want to bring back Kenyon Drake or Cleveland Furl. Well, how expensive is he? He's not really that expensive. What if I just make it five years, take the money down a lot? Wants more money? Hmm, I don't know. Jonathan Abram, I think we all know is like not ideal here but it's not the worst thing, so we'll keep him. It's like a pretty horrible review, but it is what it is. Rock Yassine, five-year deal. He's back in a stick in Las Vegas, and then Trayvon Mullen, probably the most important. Amp up the money just a little bit and re-sign him as well. I thought Bilal Nichols was face scanned into this game for some reason. Definitely not. I mean, if you saw this guy, you would never, ever, 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 ever guess that his position was defensive tackle and that he's a nose tackle. That guy, right on your right, doesn't look close to 300 pounds. Just doesn't. As it probably will be in real life, the AFC West was a bloodbath with no winners. <laughs> Everyone loses. Went 9-8. and eight, Missed out on the playoffs, unfortunately. But... It's a, it's a real possibility. Derek Carr had a pretty good season, though, just from a stat stat check. Josh Jacobs, kind of the same deal. Only eight touchdowns, but that's not too bad. Hunter Renfro, over 1,400 yards, 10 touchdowns. He might be going up to superstar development. Might put Devontae Adams in the slot next season, and he was pretty good as well. Darren Waller put up pretty good numbers. And then defensively, Devon Diablo had 120 tackles, eight for loss. Chandler Jones went off, 25 tackles for loss, 19 for Crosby, and then 17 and a half sacks for Chandler Jones, 15 for Max Crosby, eight and a half for Solomon Thomas. And how is Cleveland Furl playing enough to get four sacks? Maybe it's a good thing we brought him back. 2022 season recap has the Packers beating the Steelers in the Super Bowl, Rodgers winning Super Bowl MVP. Justin Herbert won MVP, but Chandler Jones is your defensive player of the year. I can see a lot of this stuff happening. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Kayvon Thibodeau with the Jaguars. It's possible. All of this seems somewhat believable. I mean, Sam Howell maybe not going to win Rookie of the Year with the Washington football team that just traded for Carson Wentz. But, you know, you know suspend your disbelief for a second, and it's, it's at least a world where that exists. Maybe they draft him second round. Wentz gets injured. Wentz can't play, Howell comes in. I don't know. It, it's possible. Do we have a first rounder this year? You know, I actually don't know. Richard Royal? Riverside Royals? 
Anyone watch that series? Yeah, some people do. A few. Yes, we do have a first round pick. Number 15. We're in prime potential trade up range. But what would I be trading up for? We got to do something to take the next step. And it, you know, isn't surrounding the stars in place. Derek Carr up to superstar, by the way. Hunter Renfro up to superstar. Here's the problem. Carr's 32 and is getting worse. It looks like he's not getting worse. He's getting worse. Hunter Renfro, now 27. Um, he's not going to remain at this level for all that long, unfortunately. Offensive line, something that maybe we'll look to do in free agency. Might cut Richie Incognito. And... Oh. Defensively, we need to improve as well. Like, our edge rushers are set. Our corners, I think, are set. Kinda. We could maybe use one. Divine Diablo up the star. Maybe, I don't know. It's tough. Everyone, there's just a lot of mediocre on the team. We need to do better than that. Incognito's 40, he's gone. Furl, Drake, good. All gone. I will say the DBs in this class look horrible. So probably not going that direction. Okay, so all three of the top right outside linebackers all have the same face. Immersion ruined. The D-tackle class looks pretty good. Richard Royal seems awesome. I'm looking for the fastest D-tackle. Here he is. 472 at 307. That is absurd. Finally, Doug Brewer is a great center. We can just tell he's going to be good. Earl Krause could be good too. Yeah, he's going to be. He's going to be. With those A's, we need to rebuild the offensive line. Corey Walker looks like he could be pretty good too. I'm just going to get a lot of centers. This will be the center draft. Ooh, Nick Bosa. I feel like he never makes it to free agency. Um... I don't really see a way where we get him involved, though. Like, yeah, he'd be a good replacement over Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones is in the title, probably. So I'm going to keep him. Ngakwe's back. Jordan Poirier really isn't too much of an upgrade over Jonathan Abram in game. Uh, I don't know. I don't really love the options. I'm tempted to just keep my money. Colton Miller's cool. Do I really want to bring back Richie Incognito? Dalton Reisner wouldn't be the worst. Nate Davis would be better. See Giants legend Mark Lewinsky in there. I think Nate Davis is the best. Let's give him a contract. We got Nate Davis. I would maybe be interested in Bobby Wagner if he's still here. He is not. We just, we need to get younger. Like, the idea of a Band-Aid like Bobby Wagner was somewhat appealing. But it's not the best move. We gotta, we just gotta get younger, gotta get better. And that's ignoring those free agents and looking toward the draft. NFL draft time, I expect to be active a lot. There's gonna be a lot of moving up and down the board here. And when you look at our team and you look at what we really need... It's offensive and defensive line. Not edge rushers, maybe, but certainly on the interior, I want to upgrade on Solomon Thomas. And the linebackers are weird. I obviously don't love the group. You can tell that by looking at it, but I don't know that this is the draft to focus on linebacker. It's not a great spot to be in. But I do kind of want to trade up for a guy like Richard Royal, who just looks absurd. Is really what it comes down to. Just looks insane. Like, even Shadon Dixon down the board looks really good. But I think it's worth it to move up. I like the idea of Quentin Kendricks, too. As A power moves is clearly a freakish athlete. These things are tempting to me. Is it worth it to move up when he's on the board? Man, that's a good question. Probably... I want both. That would be neat. Can't really use both. So who would I rather have? He just... I know he's going to be a great run defender. It's not worth it to move up when I need to move up later for offensive linemen. 
All right, I'm making the responsible move and that's going to 15. He's going to be so good though. All right, Quentin Kendricks, welcome to the Raiders. We got a little bit of pass rush and he has hidden dev, 80 speed, 92 strength. I hope he can stop the run. We know he can get after the QB, which is kind of the big thing that led me to pick him over Royal. We just didn't know about him as a pass rusher, so I didn't really feel confident in investing a high pick on what could really just be an athletic nose tackle, i.e. Jordan Davis, who still could be great, but it's just kind of an unknown. I mean, the parallels really are all over the place there. Quentin Kendricks, I know, is going to be very athletic, faster, looked about quite as strong with the... Uh, with the bench press, we'll compare the two after the draft. And we know we can rush the passer with A power moves. But now it's about getting in position to land some of these other offensive linemen. And those are the centers. Doug Brewer, Earl Krause, and Corey Walker. Also, when I said Earl, it sounded like I had marbles in my mouth. So excuse that. No marbles in there. Just Earl is one of those names. Doug Brewer, 29 spots down. Well, I want I want to pick at the top of the second. Who had the first pick? I think the Lions were right in there. Maybe the Lions want to make a move. Yeah, 33. Exactly what I want. I would like to not trade a second to get it done. But maybe two threes, one this year, one next year. Okay, it's close. What if I added in a fifth? They're gonna be like, still no. Alright, that's fair. That's fair. What if I took away a pick and added a player? Certainly not Derek Carr. They're not going to want Cole Kelly, probably. Ooh, they might. <laughs> it's just like, I uh, accidentally unplugged the light with my foot. And it made it look like I had an idea. But, I mean, you guys can only see how it reflects on my face. Cole Kelly for a second? Okay, no. But there's something going on here. Maybe a fourth? Okay, no. It's going to be Cole Kelly, a fourth, and a third. I should have done a third next year. Maybe it would have been declined, but we got the pick that I want. I just, I want to be able to get all the centers I want, and that's three. And it's not easy to be in position to draft all the centers. It's just not. Doug Brewer's available. I'm taking him. Hidden Dev, 87 strength, 6'5", 318. That's a tackle. That is a tackle. Earl Krause, Corey Walker, two, three guys. I'd like to think that they're going to stay available. Where's Earl here? 30 spots down. I'd like to think that he stays available, but also I would rather trade up. Maybe with the Rams. Trading number 56 projected next year. So a second next year. A fifth and a sixth this year for number 39 guaranteed. So I'm doing whatever it takes to move up, which isn't really doing all that much, to be honest. Our draft is pretty much going to be done. After these two picks, I'll probably just simulate to the end and not worry about moving back into the draft we are out of picks at this point and i think both of these picks will be spent on centers earl kraus is built like a center though 6 1 3 12 that's a center no question about it Corey walker kind of the same thing maybe more like a guard at 6 4 but center is obviously a possibility we have andre james but he'll probably play guard i'm gonna take earl kraus high hopes for him 90 strength goodness Hidden Dev 2. Things are going really well. And last pick of the draft should be a good one. This center also looks really good. Sometimes you just got to take the centers. I've told you guys a million times. They're the best offensive lineman in the draft. Another Hidden Dev player. 87 strength. Good speed too. We know with a pass block, a pass block power. He's going to be pretty good. So I'm really happy with how this draft went. Uh, we took guys only right up the middle on the line, center, 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 and of course, defensive tackle at the start. I think we did really well. I would not be surprised with four players at or above 74 overall, which I think is doing pretty well. Maybe even higher than that. And let's see. How did we do? All right. Well, Kendricks is a 75. We'll compare him to the other defensive tackle, but with 76 block shed, 81 power moves, 74 finesse moves, 80 speed, great strength. I mean, he looks really, really good. Cannot be mad about that one. Matthew Dyson's a 69 overall. Turns out Richard Royal, worth trading up for. He's an 81. He's the best player in the class. He's very good. 94 strength, 85 block shed, 82 power moves. 
73 finesse moves, 85 tackle. Here's the thing. It's like he's obviously better than the guy we got. But memorize what he has. And let's go back to my player. Wow, Zay McLean was also higher overall. This was just a stacked defensive tackle class. But Quentin Kendricks, I think it's just awareness that's bringing him down. Because he has, what, minus two strength. Block shed's worse. Power moves like minus one. Finesse moves maybe minus one. And then tackles a little bit worse. But can you honestly say that he's minus six overall? I wish I could compare them side by side, but it, you can't compare by positions here. Anyway, Earl Kraus pretty good too. Oh, he looks like a Raider. Oh, with those elbow pads, he looks like a Raider. This is like a classic 1970s. I mean, with the, the tape there on the hands too. That, that's Gene Upshaw if he was white. Corey Walker, which is high praise, by the way. Corey Walker's Jim Otto. So Krause is a 75, playing up to a 76 overall left guard. Walker's a 72 center. We know that. And then Brewer's a 77 overall right tackle, who is a scheme fit, by the way, which is nice. Offensive line is starting to look really, really good. Just have to worry about some of these other guys regressing. And then linebacker is still obviously a pretty large problem. I'm going to try and trade Solomon Thomas for anything. I think we could probably get Isaiah Simmons easily. I know I traded it for him in the Browns rebuild. Spoiler, if you haven't watched the Browns rebuild, go watch that. But um, I can't I can't start Asamoah, Diablo, and Clark. I got to do better than that. Have to. Have to. I think I can get Levante David because he's 33. Yeah, we're going to be able to. They don't want to trade Devin White. You're going to be shocked by that. But Solomon Thomas in a sixth, that gets me Levante David. He's just 33, and it's a rental, is what it is. Which is, it's not a bad rental. He just is only going to get much, much worse. He also feels like a Raider, right? Am I crazy to say that? Why does everyone feel like a Raider? That makes the defense look a little bit better, though. And then... Devontae Adams is going to go to the slot so he can produce more. All right, we're good. Slightly better start to this season, five and two. Texans are one and five. Ooh, we can see some dev traits too. I should have just upgraded those players. Our entire offensive line we're gonna be able to see. I think they're all gonna be star, obviously hoping for better, but I would be very surprised. They are all star, nobody shocked. And then I'm sure star at D tackle, we actually don't know yet. A couple weeks away maybe. Still looks really good. Happy with that pick. Darren Waller, Bilal Nichols, Brian Edwards, Darius Phillips. I want to bring back at least the first four. Maybe not Darius Phillips, but at least the first three. All right, this is a fine contract for Darren Waller. Darren Waller returns. Bilal Nichols, four years probably. I think the money's fine. He wants more though. And then Brian Edwards. I like him as a third or fourth option. Right now, he's our third, and he returns long-term. 13-4 and four was not good enough to win the division. Chiefs won it at 14-3. and three. And Derek Carr, pretty good. Only 34 touchdowns compared to his yardage. It's not a great ratio. Uh, uh, who cares? Plus ratio, plus washed, plus uh, that stuff is stupid. Uh, Josh Jacobs, though, nearly 1,500 yards, 17 touchdowns receiving. Devontae Adams, 1,900 yards. Somebody call 1911 because Devontae Adams is on fire. 15 touchdowns. That joke was elite. If you thought I was going to say horrible, wrong. 21 and a half sacks for Chandler Jones, 15 for Max Crosby, and then four picks for Nate Hobbs would actually have the team. Rocky's seen with three. You know, Anthony Averett also signed with this team in real life. But uh, also, it doesn't, it doesn't matter for the sake of this video. You'll have to forgive me. And uh, hopefully we can beat the Patriots. No tuck rule going on here. 38-22. We come away with the victory this time. Raiders, Ravens. Also, let me put unstoppable force. I, I always prefer that an edge threat on the edge rushers. Chandler Jones probably going to wear 55 as well, if I had to guess, but not here. Raiders, Ravens. Let's see what we got. Nope. 
lost out of the playoffs. All right. Oh, contract extended though. Also, I didn't I didn't make a coach name. What would I have done? Um I don't know. Ooh, Ravens Giants Super Bowl rematch and the Ravens come out on top yet again. Sad. Chandler Jones won defensive player of the year, Patrick Mahomes MVP. Maybe Devonte Adam bomb. No, it's not spelled the same way, but that's the whole point. Is that trade was like an explosion it's not my best work who do we need to resign Ooh, Bilal Nichols that's right wanted more money well we have it so Bilal Nichols is back Darius Phillips I said could walk is he regressing I thought he was at least a 75 he is regressing oh man turn 28 your career is over Justin Tucker's here uh Jalen Johnson would actually be a really big signing I'm going to consider that. I really am. Xavier McKinney. With his dev trait, that's also something I definitely should consider. Josh Jacobs up to superstar. I'll take that. I don't really know how much it's going to do. We'll leave him with what he has, I, I guess. All right. And then Kendricks, to no surprise, had it. Star. Divine Diablo up to superstar. Still only a 75 overall, though. Levante David's down to an 80, playing up a little bit. Jonathan Abram could be a solid backup. Yeah, I like the idea of adding a corner and a safety. A linebacker, too, but I could draft or trade for one. Now, we can save money by cutting Levante David. Oh, Alex Leatherwood is still here. No one's going to want Levante David. I think Leatherwood might have some interest. I'll see if anyone wants Levante. Green? He's like 34. I've never seen this before. He does have Superstar X Factor, though. Maybe that's carrying the interest. Give me Jamin Davis. And actually, maybe I don't want Jamin Davis. Who the Giants got Kyle Hamilton? They're not going to want to trade him. Brees Hall, too. Malik Willis. Who didn't they draft? The Titans have the number two and number three pick in the draft. Surely I can manage to steal that away. The interest can't be that much. What if I just... What if I just traded my first? I don't think this is going to go through either. It says green interest. The interest really is not that high. All right. Leatherwood and David for a second round pick from the Giants. It's it's a decision to clear cap space. And maybe we can use that pick to trade up or trade for a player. I think it's a decent trade. No free agents. All right, that's a lie. I want Jalen Johnson. I'm going to up the money to make sure we get him. I want Xavier McKinney as well. We have a really big lead there. Actually, you know what? I'll check out linebacker also. Maybe there's somebody I can play some sort of value play for. Ugh doesn't look great and the reason it doesn't look great is because it's not great we're gonna have to pass Jalen Johnson rejected why 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 got Xavier McKinney though why would Jalen Johnson not accept annoying number one goal find a good linebacker and you're like you just had one I didn't really he was an 80 did he have a great dev trait? Yeah. Doesn't count for that much. Man, this guy looks pretty good. Yeah, could be a good player. So Quincy Favors ran in the four threes at his pro day. And that intrigues me with elite strength for the position. I'm intrigued. Now, he does have C Pursuit. C Zone, C Man. Don't love that. But I'm interested. Now... Is he worth the selection? We would have to go up the board to get him. Pick a 28. And Favors is supposed to go at 12. If he's there at 10 and I can reasonably make a move up, I'll consider. Oh, shoot. All right. Well, I simulated to my pick. <laughs> I wanted to simulate to the next pick. Surely he's still not available. 
It's a missed opportunity, maybe. Now, Gordon Brackett, I don't really know anything about. He seems just a little bit worse. I can't in good faith draft him. I'm going to try and trade for a middle linebacker. Like, not Levante David, but probably a similar trade. Can't trade it first for Miles Jack. Because, well, Miles Jack in real life got cut. <laughs> Signed with the uh, Steelers, but... All right. Still trying to figure out how to get a middle linebacker. Two with three and a four gets me Patrick Queen. I can work with that. Patrick Queen to the Raiders. And we'll draft somebody at this spot. I don't know if they're going to play very much. I don't even know what I would I would take that would play. Do I just take a shot on Gordon Brackett now because we have somebody? Guaranteed. The corner is going to be terrible. Yeah, I'll, I'll take him. Let's go with Gordon Brackett. We know he's a pretty good athlete. I don't expect him to be that great. Does have hidden dev, 88 speed, 80 strength. I would consider maybe starting him at outside linebacker. Depends what his attributes are, really. He's a 71. 88 speed, 86 cycle. Block shed's bad. We knew that. He's going to be a slightly better outside linebacker. I can see it going up like plus one, maybe plus two overall at the absolute most. Could even stay the same. This was 72. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I don't think we can start him. But what if he has superstar dev? He won't, but also what if? To be fair, Bracket is not really that much worse than Damone Clark. I'll go for it. Offense looks pretty good. It's just, you know, Derek Carr is getting significantly worse. And then defensively, I like where we are. I don't necessarily love it. It's a decent defense for sure. It just isn't great. D-line looks good. Corners look acceptable. Safeties look acceptable. Linebackers are not fantastic. I think that's where I am. It's not horrible. Diablo over McKinney. Five and two. Our defense, we're allowing a lot of pass yards per game. The most in the league. Our run defense seems amazing, but is that because teams can just pass the ball at will? Are we going to make a big trade deadline acquisition? I have money for a CB1. The question is, do I have, do I have the picks slash the players to get a trade done? Still don't know Brackett's uh, development rate. He's probably just not playing that much. Left outside linebacker, not incredibly important. Doesn't really see the field too much. Abram could be moved. Tyree Gillespie could play. And we could get a true CB1. My safeties, they're not so bad. But I need a top of the line corner, I think. Is there any chance I can land Pat Sertan? I'm not going to trade in division. But I want someone like that. Denzel Ward's a possibility. That's something to note. It's a possibility. Trayvon Diggs, do we get a, a ball hawk? So we're more likely to get Denzel Ward. Howard. Eh. Terrell is just going to be off limits. Yeah. Monster trade. Two first round picks and a second for Denzel Ward. Of course, one of the first being next year. Got our true CB1. Midseason trade had to happen. Raiders finally get the right Ohio State corner. Shout out Damon Arnett. 13 and 4. Made the playoffs. Love to see it. Derek Carr. I mean, this is best year by a mile here, in my opinion. Just the touchdown to interception ratio is ridiculous. 47 touchdowns to six picks is elite. Rushing. Josh Jacobs, quite good as well. Receiving Devontae Adams, 1,700 yards, 15 TDs, over 100 catches. Ryan Edwards actually was receiver two, basically. Aaron Waller was productive enough. And then defensively, Devon Diablo is a tackling machine, as is Patrick Queen. Rhyming accidentally. 22 tackles for loss for Crosby, 18 for Jones. Quarterback sacks Chandler at 18.5. Max with 11.5. Saw seven in there as well. Five picks for Xavier McKinney. Like that. Who had seven? Quinton Kendricks. I like that. Divine Diablo is doing everything. 
he's just gonna end up being superstar x factor for no reason he keeps getting upgraded after every season i'm not complaining but it's like what is he doing to get that another patriots matchup here in the divisional we gotta beat him we're 90 overall i'd be shocked if we lost 38 to 13 oh no not the jags the jags are just so good in simulation for some reason <laughs> they're so good wow jaguars up to an early lead we answer the field goals we're into the second quarter now jaguars answer the field goal of their own but finally a touchdown from vegas as we're gonna head into the second half raiders take the lead 13 10 jaguars answer with a touchdown 17 13 raiders not done 2017 and jacksonville turns over the football raiders driving and find the end zone 27 17 with just over two minutes to play and that seems to be a turnover Raiders get the football back, and that could do it. And it will. 27-17, Jaguars go down, and the Raiders will advance to the Super Bowl. Interception from Trevor Lawrence and Derek Carr, to be fair. Was there a fumble or something as well? No fumbles. I guess just a late-game interception that really sealed the deal, put the Raiders on top. What a game. What a game. Doug Brewer going to be an 86 overall. Playing up to an 87. That's pretty good. He's developed really, really quickly. It's only 23 years old. The development of this offensive line has been absolutely insane. And it's Raiders, Cowboys. Cowboys love to make the Super Bowl. And Derek Carr actually does have an upgrade here. Going to play up to an 87. Cowboys are an 87. Got Micah, Zeke, Dak. Pretty good team, but hopefully we are just a little bit better. I kind of feel like doing another season after this. I don't know how long we're into this rebuild or how deep into it, I should say. But I think we can get another season going after this, depending on how quickly this goes, which it's going to go. That doesn't don't ignore what I just said. Cowboys up 7-3 as we're into the second quarter. And wow, I thought for sure points were going to happen there, but it's 10-7 Raiders. Now 17-7, 24-10. Raiders pulling out in the head and it's going to be over surely 30 to 24 Cowboys made a bit of a comeback but it wasn't enough Raiders come out on top 30 to 24 that was pretty anticlimactic for the Super Bowl but I was just kind of confused with like a, a big turnover and then trying to figure out which end zone was which while talking while adjusting the headset but I don't know how the Cowboys didn't score. It happened in the blink of an eye. No fumbles, no picks. Wild stuff here. Wild stuff. But in the end, a Super Bowl for this Raiders team. It just felt like there wasn't a big enough buildup to that victory. Either way, I'm not complaining because the Raiders are Super Bowl champions. Mission accomplished. Season recap has... Derek Carr winning MVP, I think well-deserved. This D-tackle's name is Theo Inzerma. Interesting. What's a dev trade for Gordon Brackett? Star. Not surprising. We'll give him pass coverage. Do we need to re-sign anybody here? Ooh. Yeah, Divine Diablo does have Superstar X-Factor despite not being an 80 overall. <laughs> he's going to be a bargain, pretty much. But he's just not, like, that good in the game yet? Merrig, I do want to bring back as well. He's a safety, which means he's going to be fairly cheap, and he is back. Chandler Jones, of course, I'm going to bring back for the video. Would I normally, though? You know, I think so. I think I would. Just because it's the final season, probably. He's going to play, you know, probably up to a 90 overall at the end of the year. Nate Hobbs. Got to bring him back. Boom. I think we're going to be good. Maybe bring back Tyree Gillespie as well, just for that backup strong safety role. Just because he's decent enough. Tyree Gillespie's back. We don't even have a first round pick this year because we traded for Denzel Ward, which was worth it, won the Super Bowl. He's probably a big reason why. You don't really have money to sign anybody, but I don't really think it matters. We have a 90 overall team, 92 offense. Is there anything I really need to do here? Derek Carr, superstar X Factor. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with anything offensively. And then defensively, Max Crosby up to Superstar X-Factor. Xavier McKinney up to Superstar X-Factor. Why? 
Again, not complaining, but... DB of the year. Huh. Did he really do anything that crazy? I guess. Bracket seems to be a good pick now. He's at a 78 overall. We're good. This team's good to go. Just like the 2022 draft, the Raiders don't pick until the third round, but it was worth it, obviously. Anything to take here at the back end of the third? I don't... I don't know. Travis Knight, I would say, looks good enough. If I'm taking a receiver. Just to have depth. I'm, I'm gone. Yeah, I don't need to see multiple Ds. This isn't a locker room. Give me... Give me Travis Knight here. Looks good enough. That's good enough. CPU can handle the rest. I took an Arkansas State Red Wolf receiver. I can name one Arkansas State Red Wolves player in the league. It's Demario Davis. Is there anybody else? 100% has to be. Because Arkansas State is not that small. It's not like, you know, Robert Rochelle from Central Arkansas. There's got to be. But let's see who else. Okay, so JD McKissick. I did not know he was Arkansas State. Kirk Merritt. I don't know who that is on the Saints. Uh, Forrest Merrill. Don't know who that is. And Omar Bayless of the Chiefs. And I know who that is. But these aren't exactly big names. But McKissick and Demario Davis are, you know, pretty noteworthy. 91 overall team, 92 offense, 91 defense in a really good spot. It's just about the development of the guys that we already have. Derek Carr really isn't going to get much better. But the rest of the team looks very, very good. Especially the defense should continue to get better. So I'm stoked about it. 12-5 and five made the playoffs, so that the Chiefs won the division again. All we're trying to do here is repeat. If we don't, we don't. Derek Carr had a very similar year to, I think, year two of this rebuild. Josh Jacobs was excellent. 5.4 per carry at 19 touchdowns. Receiving Devontae Adams, unreal. 10 touchdowns for Josh Jacobs as a receiver, by the way. 29 total touchdowns for Josh Jacobs. And 2,000 all-purpose yards, total yards. Probably all-purpose, I guess, but he's not doing any returning. Divine Diablo continues to rack up the tackles. So many tackles for loss for these, for these boys, including Divine Diablo. And then 19 sacks for Max Crosby. 17 for Chandler Jones. Five picks for Denzel Ward and four for Patrick Queen. First offense in the league in terms of yards. What about for points? First. Defensive points per game was third. Dude. Surely. Surely we're not going to lose to the Bengals here. Beat the Bengals 42-28. That's pretty good. Trayvon Mullen's going to go into the 90s probably. Let's upgrade zone, make them a little bit more well-balanced, though. Patriots, again, they're only an 84 overall. We're plus 9. 49-10. That's what I'm looking for. Now, the Chiefs could be a real challenge. That's certainly a possibility. Diablo, I'm going to keep going run stopper just because he can't do that otherwise. Like, we're going to pull up his block shed. It's going to be like a 71. It's not even. It's not even. Brian Edwards can get upgraded to an 83. And should I jump in here? It's the Chiefs. It's the conference championship. Let's get it done. Plus four overall. Let's take them out. Uh, why are we at Arrowhead, dude? We should have home field advantage. I know they had a better record when the division. It doesn't matter. We should have it. Oh, we're getting smashed. 17-10 now, though. Oh, big defensive stop. I'm jumping in. Last play of the third quarter, maybe. Dude, I wish we had some speed over the top. And I know why we don't. But I'll take a Brian Edwards first down. Ball came out a little late. Derek Carr has two picks. Classic Carr choke job. Darren Waller touchdown. This play is going to get open. Surely. Is that J.J. Watt, by the way? Devontae Adams. Wide open. Carr hit him. Oh, that's got to be a touchdown. We stepped out of bounds. First and ten. I wanted to throw it. Carr's actually got some pretty good speed. I'm diving. <laughs> Thank God he didn't fumble. There was absolutely no reason to take that risk. There really wasn't. I'm going to run the football. Jacobs, touchdown. We're going to be tied here. 
the thing is the defense has to step up and make a stop and that could be a real challenge against Patrick Mahomes no question about it and they're actually gonna punt Patrick Mahomes classic choke job <laughs> should I just start that narrative and uh we'll see we'll see if we can end it any points will end it as long as we manage the clock correctly wide open Devonte adams are we moving the ball too quickly maybe doesn't matter Devonte adams unstoppable third and six after a failed read option that i didn't even realize i was running but we have Devonte adams diving catch that's a big play that could win it Carr's actually in the zone i don't know what his zone is inside that i don't throw in completion but what what is it what does it do Leo Chanel's got superstar now? Yeah, they do have JJ Watt. Oh, we got blocks. Do we score? No. Not yet. Second and goal. We don't even have to score here. I I don't even want to. Just go down. There's gonna be third down here. The time is perfect. KC is pretty much screwed, is what it comes down to. Pretty much screwed. I probably will try and score a touchdown on this play. But we don't need to. Jacobs into the end zone touchdown and that should end it Tyron Matthews still in KC by the way I'm curious to see where he goes in real life but KC is going to need a miracle here and they won't get one <laughs> time expires and the Raiders are going back to the Super Bowl can we repeat Carr throws for just a yard shy of 400 only one touchdown though in the winning effort over Kansas City the road would you call that an upset i don't know if you would because we won the super bowl last year clearly a very good team higher overall but the chiefs won more games and had home field advantage probably would have been a pretty close line maybe a pick them and the lions are in the super bowl it's bizarre world here on the Bengal youtube channel final team here if we don't beat the raider or the lions dude to me when I first think of bad teams, these will be the first two teams that I always think of because it's the 2000s, right? It was right when I was really getting into football and the Raiders and the Lions were just horrific and they just couldn't do anything right. Like it was like bad draft pick after bad draft pick and like weird trade signing. Like Randy Moss was a Raider, but Denzel Ward and Patrick Queen up to superstar dev offensively. Things are looking the same. But think about that. Randy Moss was a Raider. Crazy weird trade. It didn't last very long. And then the Lions, and, and really the Raiders too, just kept striking out. The Raiders with Al Davis, RIP, just drafting for speed every single draft. Darius Hayward Bay is like the big one that kind of stands out in my memory for like the exactly what Al Davis would want. Just speed. And then Jamarcus Russell was obviously one of the biggest misses in draft history, if not the biggest. And this is going to be a murder, probably. Eh, maybe it's 21-3. It is. Uh, the Lions just kept missing. Matt Millen was their GM. It's like Charles Rogers and I guess Roy Williams was kind of a miss. It, like, wasn't really that good with the Lions, more with the Cowboys. 41-3 is your final in the Super Bowl here. It, it is a murder. This might be the biggest margin a victory in Super Bowl history but the Raiders have repeated as champions Derek Carr throws for over 400 with four touchdowns Matthew Dyson was I think the number one pick he was like a 69 overall played like it he's terrible dude Lions franchise will be coming back just there have been more relevant things to post they drafted Aiden Hutchinson there have just been more important things to post at this point and Denzel Ward who we traded for Gets two interceptions to help us win the Super Bowl. That's big. Um, of course, I didn't have fun. But yeah, man, like, there are even more examples. I just named a couple. We can't be here all day. But yeah, man, I mean, just those are the bad teams for me. Like, the Jaguars, of course, are in there too, but they really weren't so bad in the 2000s. Like, sometimes they were, right? But not all the time. Like, Fred Taylor, you know, was really good. Rasheen Mathis for a bit. John Henderson, even though there's some different teams in there. Byron Leftwich, David Garrard with the Jags. Like, they weren't terrible, terrible every year. 
the way in my head the Lions and the Raiders were. But that is going to do it for this video. Rebuilding the Raiders with Devontae Adams and Chandler Jones. I had a blast. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you want to see more of these, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Joke. I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.